So by now, a few different times on this podcast, I've talked about these uh, these the so-called manosphere alpha male uh, red pill podcasts and uh, the kind of content that they carry on that and the kind of things that I see on them whenever I'm scrolling on YouTube and I'll see clips of them. Usually it'll just be clips and sometimes you'll pay attention to them and sometimes you don't. But it seems to me that these things must be must be really, really well promoted because it seems that every time that you click on one of them, you know, the algorithm just pumps your timeline just full of these different videos. And so you see more of these clips and more of these clips and more of these clips. And so every so often they will they will put something forward. They will they will give you a proposition in the, the form of the title or the thumbnail of the video that makes it seem just interesting enough that you might want to click on it. And sometimes you do. And it just so happened that recently, after falling into this trap again, and <laughs> I do I personally I do consider it I, I do I do consider it to be a trap. They're tricking you. Uh, you know, there's there's not a lot there that is of, of tremendous value, but they do have to find some way to make their money. So they have to basically kind of trap you into clicking on more and more of these videos. And that's the mistake that I made. But more recently, when I did that, something kind of unusual happened that I didn't really expect. And that was that I actually managed to put my finger on exactly what it is that bothers me so much about some of these podcasts. Now, as I've mentioned before, you know, the, uh, the, the Fresh and Fit podcast, the whatever podcast, they, they kind of tend to, to run together in my mind. So it was on one of these two podcasts that I saw this happening. And I don't actually remember which one, but the one thing that I could tell you for certain about this particular podcast, whatever it was, is that this is a common occurrence, and this is what it was. There was a, uh, there was a, there was a girl on this podcast who was basically being given shit by Andrew Wilson and then being given shit by Andrew Wilson's wife. That in particular, apparently, is not such a common thing. It happens sometimes, but not, not really that often. It seems like Andrew Wilson does kind of prefer to keep the, uh, does kind of prefer to keep the spotlight on himself. It's not really all that surprising. Guys like that typically do. But the thing about it that was kind of a more common occurrence was something that kind of kept happening between during the conversation between these two. And basically what that was, was that they would be sitting there and they would be having their conversation, their little back and forth, and it is pretty antagonistic. But every so often, there's this sound effect that will suddenly sound. And then this AI-generated voice comes on and says, such and such uh, donated $69 and said, um, and then we'll, we'll basically follow almost all of the time, is some kind of insult that is being directed at the woman who is involved in this conversation. You know, it's read out by this horribly creepy AI voice with a British accent. And by the way, I mean, as just, if there's anything in this world that I hate more than absolutely anything else. It is these. It is the AI voices, you know, the AI voices in people's ads, and there are some of them that actually they're kind of like supposed to be like a, almost like a salesman type voice, but some of them actually kind of sound like almost like sinister. It's it's crazy to me that people don't find these, the people who are creating these ads, you know, don't listen to these things and then uh, say to themselves, you know, this is kind of awful. It is. And in this particular case, it's not just the voice that's off-putting. It's the things that basically they're being, they're paying money for this voice to say to these women. And sometimes they actually are trying to say something that is constructive. And so I don't really mind that nearly so much. But it seems like the vast majority of the time, it's just some insult that some incel sitting there somewhere watching this on a stream, you know, he would he would never think, you know, he, he would never in a million years actually approach one of these girls in person. And if he did, he would absolutely never find it in himself. He would never, he would never look between his legs and 
see enough of a pair of testicles there to actually say this insult to one of these women in person. But they will apparently go jump on the internet and pay for all practical intents and purposes an exorbitant amount of money. You know, I like like there was this uh, this one clip in particular, and it was like every single time it was like sixty nine dollars, sixty nine dollars, sixty nine dollars, and I guess you were just basically trying to, uh, to to poke fun at the number of these girls that are OnlyFans creators, because that is something that these guys really seem to absolutely despise, despite the fact that I would actually go so far as to wager that some of them are probably OnlyFans customers, if you catch my drift. But regardless, it is just such a such such a low T, you know, gutless and obnoxious thing to be doing to actually be spending your money on you. You would think that you would think that that is that is money that some of these guys might be better spending <laughs> might be better off spending, you know, on an actual date with an actual woman. Uh, But then again, there is a reason why they are so attracted to these red pill podcasts. And uh, I don't, I don't, I don't think there are, I don't think there are too many takers. So of course, what I'm talking about, and I should have mentioned this a lot sooner, but for anybody who might not know what it is for whatever reason, I can't imagine why. Uh, What I'm basically talking about is they call them super chats. So apparently people just They'll jump on one of these YouTube streams and they will pay a certain amount of money to have their their message of choice read out on this uh, this, this this stream or whatever it is. And as I understand it, uh, these these super chats are a big portion of the, uh, the the revenue that these streamers rely on to keep themselves, you know, so, uh, you know, in, in such in such uh, such wealthy personal circumstances. And that's the sort of thing that really kind of puts in perspective exactly what it is that these podcasts and these uh, these these YouTube streams, you know, this entire genre of it, is really about. You know, instead of actually teaching these young men, you know, to be to be better men, or at the very least to be gentlemen, you know, their entire business model is basically profiting off of these gutless losers saying these insults to these women that they would never say, they would never say it in person. Yeah, but when there's some uh, some faceless troll on the internet, they don't even have to use their own voice to say it. Oh, then suddenly they're all about it. You know, they're, they are so all about it that they are willing to pay, you know, in all, all things considered, you know, a reasonably, like a reasonable amount of, mo- amount of money to have it set for them. And that is just, that is just all kinds of tragic. You know, that somebody would actually think that that's the way that they want to spend their money. And that somebody else would actually think to themselves, you know, that's how I want to make my money. You know, to actually want to profit from that. I think maybe that is actually become one of the biggest reasons why I, I dislike these people so much and why I'm so critical of them. 